Let's take a look at an example. So where this whole conversation started was with the limit as x approaches 1 of 2x plus 3. And we said that that was equal to 5. All right, so here's how we are going to do things. Over in the corner, I'm going to do a little scratch work. And you are going to see that every time I do one of these problems, I'm going to move over to the right and I'm going to do a little bit of scratch work. And my scratch will always start with the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Now in this case, f of x is 2x plus 3, and l is the limit, which is 5, and that is going to be less than epsilon. So in all my examples leading up to this point, I let epsilon be a number. Now epsilon is going to be just the letter epsilon. Then I'm going to do a little bit of math uh, inside of the absolute value. That will be 2x minus 2 is less than epsilon. And I could factor out a 2 and get x minus 1 is less than epsilon. My goal will always be to make what's inside of the absolute value match what is going on with the limit. So if the limit is x approaching 1, then I want my absolute value to contain x minus 1. And then that will get me that the uh, absolute value of x minus 1 is less than epsilon over 2, and that is going to be what I named delta. So again, here is my scratch work. Now I'm going to answer the question. So now I'm going to answer the question, and the way that I'm going to answer the question is to go in this direction right here. I'm going to start with this being true and then show you that this needs to be true. So I will say if x minus 1 is less than my delta, and I said that delta was epsilon over 2, then that is going to imply that x minus 1 is less than epsilon over 2. And basically what you're going to see me do here is all of this work backwards. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So I get 2 times x minus 1 is less than epsilon. Then I can multiply in that 2 and get that the absolute value of 2x minus 2 is less than epsilon. And then I want to make what's inside of the, the absolute value look like f of x minus l. So I can rearrange that to be 2x plus 3 minus 5 is less than epsilon, which is of the form f of x minus 5 is less than epsilon. And if you go back to the definition, you'll see that that's exactly what I needed. I needed to have the f of x minus the limit was less than epsilon. And so then that is going to imply that the limit as x approaches 1 of 2x plus 3 is equal to 5. And that is actually the end of the problem. OK, no way that it makes sense yet. So let's take a look at another example. How about, let's say that we wanted to look at the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x minus 5. All right, well, what do we know? That as x gets closer to 2, uh, that's going to be 3 times 2 minus 5. So that'd be 6 minus 5. That's going to end up being equal to 1. So I want to prove that. So I move over to the right, and I do a little bit of scratch work. And my scratch work starts with the absolute value of f of x minus l, which in this case is 1. And I want that to be less than epsilon. f of x is 3x minus 5 minus 1 is less than epsilon. In absolute value, I will get 3x minus 6 is less than epsilon. I can factor out a 3 to get x minus 2 is less than epsilon. And again, there's a 2, and I wanted it to be that, right? So I wanted this 2 inside of here to match the 2 that x was approaching. And that gets me 
that x minus 2 in absolute value is less than epsilon over 3, and that is going to be what I named delta. That's my scratch work. Now I'll answer the question. Give myself a little bit more room. So my answer will be if 0 is less than x minus uh, 2 is less than delta, which I am naming delta, or I am saying that delta would be epsilon over 3. Uh, what will that get me? So I get x minus 2 in absolute value. x minus 2 is less than epsilon over 3. And then I'm going to do, and let me just kind of show you how this is going to work. I'm going to do a whole bunch of work, and in the end, end up with f of x minus l is less than epsilon. That's my goal, is to fill in those dots. All right, so let's see if we can do that. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, so I get 2, no. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. Sorry, I wrote down epsilon divided by 2, and that should be epsilon divided by 3. So 3 times the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon. Absolute value of 3x minus 6 is less than epsilon. Absolute value, I want this to be 3x minus 5. So 3x minus 5, then in order to make that be um, a minus 6, I've got to have minus 1 is less than epsilon, right? At each step, it's got to end up being the same. And then I left myself exactly enough room. Then I can move down to f of x, which is 3x minus 5, minus the limit, which is 1, is less than that epsilon. So that implies that the limit as x approaches uh, 2 of 3x minus 5 is, in fact, equal to 1. Let's look at one more example. do this example in red. That'll make it much more clear. What if we had the limit as x approaches 2 of 1 over 2x plus 3? Well, let's see. x equal to 2 divided by 2 is 1 plus 3. I think this limit is 4. Might be a good idea to pause and look back at the way that I did the other examples to see if you can figure out how to do this without me and then come back and see if we ended up matching. All right, so here's my scratch work. I will start with the absolute value of, uh, I'll write it as x over two plus three minus four is less than epsilon. And inside the um, parentheses, now remember, inside the absolute value, what I want to do is a bunch of stuff to get it to look like x minus 2 is less than something. Again, the, uh, the limit is approaching 2. So let's see if we can do that. Absolute value of x minus 2, and then that is minus 1 is less than epsilon. I definitely want the coefficient of x to be 1. So if the coefficient is 1 half, I've got to factor out a 1 half. And that would leave me with x minus, let's see, if I want to multiply 1 half in in order to get 1, it looks like that would have to be 2. So that does work out the way that I want it to. And then in this case, I would uh, multiply both sides by 2 and get 2 times epsilon. So there's my scratch work. So now I come and I answer the question. If 0 is less than x the absolute value of x minus 2 less than delta, which is equal to 2 times epsilon, then I get absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 2 times epsilon. And remember, where I want to be is to have inside the absolute value f of x minus l. So I'll divide both sides by 2. That will give me the absolute value of x over 2 minus 1 is less than epsilon, which I can rewrite as the absolute value of x, minus, oh, x over 2 plus 3 minus 4 is less than epsilon, and that is f of x minus 4 
less than epsilon, and that implies that the limit as x approaches 2 of 1 half x plus 3 is in fact equal to 4. So that is the way that you do a delta epsilon proof. Now, uh, as I said in the beginning, this is pretty confusing and I think I convinced you all of that. The examples that I looked at were all linear. So every function that I looked at was a linear function and those are the easiest delta epsilon proofs to look at. But that's kind of where you got to start in order to be able to understand uh, the more complicated ones that may be coming uh, at us in the future. So feel free to you know back up and watch these videos a couple of times in order to be able to understand this. You'll find that the examples that I looked at are very, very similar to the examples that are in the homework. So I hope you find this video helpful.